Good morning, everybody. Captain CA here, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to do, uh, well, I'm going to say a comparison. It's not really a test or a challenge. It's just a comparison. Uh, came up here to the boat barn, wanted to grab one of my favorite finesse setups, bring it down there, and, and share with you, when would you pick the Z-Man Finesse TRD over the Z-Man Big TRD? And you're probably saying, I don't throw those two baits very often in shore. I'm going to tell you why you need to throw them, when you need to throw them, well, and give you a couple of scenarios that will help you leverage some spooky fish. Okay, let's head down there. All right, let's talk, and it's that time of year. It, water temperatures here in my region, just to, to put a benchmark out there, are in the very low 50s. I mean, like right at 50, 51, 52 degrees. It's been cold. I mean, really cold, and it's been cold everywhere. Uh, if you're in the Carolinas, you're probably seeing water temps that are in the low 40s. You guys are almost always a good full 10 degrees colder than we are. And then if you're maybe in certain parts of the Texas viewing area, you may be as warm as the mid 50s uh, and you may be as cold as the high 40s. But when we get to this time of year, if you're not fishing the warm ups in our fronts, and we've talked about this really all winter long have been very close together and it has not offered a lot of opportunity for the water temps to get up. Now the fish do acclimate. They are cold-blooded. But what I have found in years past when you don't have some really good stretches of warm weather a lot of the typical baits that you would use this time of year smaller paddle tails and whatever first of all if they're not elastic they don't have very much action because plastisol baits in cold water, well, they're kind of tough to embrace. You got to reel them a lot faster to get the tail moving. So they're not as big a play. And we all know how cold, you know, button down fish react to a fast moving bait. They just don't want it. And then the other thing is, is you need to stay close to the bottom. So staying close to the bottom and being able to have a bait that looks alive and is visible can be a challenge. Now, I've got to hand it to my friend Eric and, and all the guys over at Mirror Lore because the Little John has been one of those baits that's just stood out um, over the last five or six years. But it works better when you can pop it, pop it, and it jumps off the bottom and hops, and then you give it another hop again. It does not do as well when you have to let the bait sit for any length of time because it just lays on the bottom. It's not buoyant enough. It's plastisol. That being said, one of the best baits out there. But a bait that we took from the bass market and a lot of inshore anglers have adopted uh, all along the west coast of Florida, and I, I've even heard along the Carolinas from a lot of kayak guys, are these two baits. I'm going to hold them up so you can see. Definitely this one here. This is the Finesse TRD, um, the turd, and then, well, for lack of a better um, description, the big turd, which is the big TRD. Now, these two baits are very similar. They're stick baits, and I've got one here that I can hold up and one here. This one is 2.75 inches. This one is about four inches right on the dot. My favorite rigging setup for the finesse TRD would be the one tenth of an ounce finesse shrooms head. Now this little head is a super fine wire. I'm going to take it off. It's a super fine wire so you can get a close-up look at this and you can see, I'll put that down, you can see the little keeper there. Okay, see it? 
and you can see the keeper, the small keeper right there on the jig head. What that does is when it's on this bait, it allows that little finesse TRD to stand right off the bottom. And I'm going to take you into the, into the shop later and show you in the tank exactly how visible this is to game fish. So when I'm having a challenging day where the flats are draining, we're fishing a couple of the deeper runs or some of the deeper bowls, and I'm just moving what I would call hole hopping, moving from one spot to the next deep spot, pulling in there, we'll just fish those finesse TRDs and we'll mix up the color scheme a little bit, but it's almost always on a one tenth ounce head uh, because then the total weight of this entire package, if you will, the entire weight of that is going to be about a quarter of an ounce. That's the total weight. So I can cast it a good distance, a quarter ounce on eight pound braid, 10 pound braid. That goes a long way. It really does. So it's, it's fantastic in that regard as far as it's small, it's dense, it casts better than all the other Ned profiles for sure. And it, it's, it's solid, but it's lifelike. It's durable. Um, and like I said, it catches everything. You're going to literally catch everything. Big fish to nuisance fish. Just does it all. Now, there's, and as lifelike as it is, I just, I just don't see how it even gets back to the boat some days. But as lifelike as it is, you've got to have the right setup to be even able to cast this thing. So... One of my favorites is this one. Now, this is a meat, meat, well, it's actually a six foot nine medium action and it's, it's fast. Uh, it is small. I've, I've got a Vanford 2000 on this. This has eight pound braid on it and it has about, I'm going to say almost six feet a liter. Um, most of it being 10 pound fluorocarbon. Uh, it's the diamond illusion. And then I put a little piece of 15 here, but I want to catch fish. And I'll give you the, the numbers right there. Hopefully you can see them. If not, my guys might be able to put them in the description for you. The Vanford's a 2000 and I picked that because it picks up lines slowly. And here's why that needs to happen. When I'm fishing this, this particular setup with one of these finesse TRDs, my favorite way to fish it is to basically just drag it. I mean, I'm, I've got my rod maybe at 10, 1030, and I'm just slowly reeling it a little bit at a time. I might stop it. That's it for a second. And then I'll just slowly reel it. What happens with this bait when you do that, let me rig this one up, is it literally moves along the bottom, and you've probably seen dozens of videos. It moves along the bottom, and then it will fall over because it gets snagged up on something, pop back up, and then move along the bottom, fall back over, and a fish will literally track it. Redfish love this thing. They really do. But I'd say that's my number one way that I like to fish this bait. Now, a couple of other ways. Let's just say you're going to fish the edge of a creek. There's a deep bend on the outside edge of the creek that might be four to six feet deep. I would throw it up tide. And as it comes down the tide, I would just raise my rod so it comes off the bottom. The tide would carry it and then it would kind of fall down. Because as small as it is, that little tail will kind of vibrate and it will fall back down. Then I'll reel it up once I see that it's hit bottom, my line goes slack. I'll pick it up again. I'm not reeling, I'm not popping, I'm just picking it up. So it gets up in the tide again and then it'll just kind of waffle down again like that. And that little tail just has a little shake to it. You don't have to shake the rod. It already has shake built in. This stuff is, doesn't matter how cold the water is, it's just, that's the way this stuff is built. So you're just, to give you an idea, you're just gonna lift that rod and then let it fall. Cause you're going with the current. As Soon as you see the line kind of get slack again, keep that line, get that line tight again, lift it up again, and let it just kind of ride with that tide out that creek mouth. 
one time you're going to lift it up and you're going to feel a mushy weight there and you're going to hammer them and you don't really have to hit them that hard uh, this is a faster or quicker tip on this little versa series this rod was actually designed uh, for drop shots shaky heads and ned rigs as you can see on the handle here it's from Fitzgerald, so it was made for it. So this setup is so light, you feel everything and you'll see the tick of the line. That's why I'm using white lines so I can see if the line jumps. But I'd say when I'm fishing, the, this type of finesse TRD Ned Rig, that's the two retrieves that I'm always using. Now, what, what would be a good instance where I'd want to use this more in a sight fishing role? Well, there are many cases throughout the year does not have to be this cold where you're outside the cold weather months and you're just having a hard time with spooky pressured fish in clear water. Again, this type of bait does a fantastic job because it has such a small signature when you cast it and it hits the water, especially with redfish, and you're able to move it into their zone stop it and it's just going to stand straight up does a great job on spooky redfish but like i said between the jig head combination it's a system the body it's a quarter ounce it's very easy on this rod setup for me to accomplish casts that are anywhere from 90 to 100 plus feet at times um, just depends on the wind conditions and whatnot but that's where the finesse trd really excels now I will say this, when you're doing the, drag, the dragging technique where you're slow reeling and pulling and slow reeling and pulling, just getting it on the bottom, it does take time to cover water. And this is better in checkered bottom or muddy bottom where they can see it. Now if you start getting into turtle grass and stuff that's taller, this is going to be a little bit tougher for them to find. Now you can change the colors and use chartreuse colors and things like that for them to see it a little bit better. But for me, I would then switch and fish the big TRD right here. And that's what we're going to talk about next because you got to throw that on a totally different setup. And I have a different style that I really like to throw this. So the big TRD. There's a couple of different ways I rig this. Again, I'm using these really, um, these are all pieces of terminal tackle. Um, some from Mustad, some from, from, uh, from our friends at Z-Man. But this is probably the way I fish it the most. This is on, for the most part, a 16th of an ounce um, Pro Bullets. Okay, it, It's probably closer to an 8th. You have to really weigh these things on the, on the gram scale. Then the weight of, of the actual big TRD. So the whole... I'm going to say the whole package is three eighths of an ounce. So I'm going to be able to cover a lot more water with this profile versus this profile. That extra eighth lets me cast it a lot farther. So for me, I can cover a bigger zone. It's a more visible bait. Where my cast with this, I'm going to be working a little bit slower and I'm going to have to make the cast, these presentations closer together to get noticed. This bait, I can make the presentations here. And then when it gets back, I can throw it over here. And then when it gets back, I can throw it over here. So I can cover a lot more water. On those days where the water is not in the downtrend, getting colder, it's either static Oh, and it may be late afternoon or something where you might even have a bump up a degree or two or three. Or your third day past the front and it's definitely warming up. That's when the big TRD really comes out and shines for me. Now on the Pro Bullets, I literally swim this. Honestly, I swim it and you're like, well, what? it doesn't have a tail. It doesn't have any action. Let me tell you, when that thing goes through that water, that tail kind of just waffles along it just kind of it's a real subtle swim it almost looks like a shrimp a big shrimp a four inch select size shrimp swimming through the water it does a great job because that tail just kind of wobbles like that when you swim it against the tide or against a little bit of current it does a really good job so 
I'll fish the deeper spots. I'll fish grass with this. It does not get hung up. It does a fantastic job. If it falls to the bottom, it'll stand straight up and it's a lot more visible because it's a longer tail. It's a bigger bait. So I can let it sit there and, the, and it'll just swing. It'll just swing. It doesn't need much current and it'll just swing around. They think it's alive even when you're not moving it on slack line. It'll just fall and wave in the potholes or in the checkered bottom. So there's not a lot of baits that do that for you. Because if you're throwing plastisol, all it does is hit the bottom and then fall down. You get cold water temperatures and you're not constantly moving this thing. They just fall down. This one is working for you when you're not working. Another way I like to work it is with a shaky head. Now, look at the way this one is rigged, okay? You'll notice that I didn't bring the hook all the way through and text pose it like I did with the Pro Bullets. With the Pro Bullets, I'm swimming that. With this one, it's on the bottom and I'm purposely have it hooked this way so it'll have more action. The nice thing about having a bait like this is I can bury the hook point inside the, the, the bait itself. So there's nothing to get snagged. So I can work it in all the potholes and through the grass and catch fish that others can't. And then when a fish grabs this tail, it'll rip right through because this stuff is so compressible. It's so soft. You can't do that. If you pick up a plastisol bait and you squeeze it, it's dense. It doesn't go anywhere. It's just solid. Not this stuff. It's You're able to rig it where you can hide the point in the bait and the fish just get caught. So lots of times I'll just dance this in holes, sight fish with it. It's been a fantastic bait for me. Swimming this bait is probably what I do 75% of the time. I will sight fish it on the shaky head. Sometimes I'll just prospect like I did with the finesse TRD where I'm just bouncing it off the bottom and let it fall down. Lift it, let it glide, let it swim back down, hit the bottom, wait a second. Both ways work remarkably well when fish don't want a lot of action. They want to sit down tight to the bottom. They're locked in their potholes. They're locked in their little bowls or their troughs where they're unhappy. Fins aren't moving around. But you're surprised how many times you can catch fish with these two profiles. And the best part about it is if you want to go and add a little procure on these, this material absorbs oil. It's got oil in it. So it's an oil-based product. So you put it in there, you put a mineral oil in there, um, like Procure, and it does not come off. I mean, you literally can apply it once and you're good for the day. I also will throw this on a little bit different rod. The other one was 6'9", medium fast. This one is a medium light, okay? And it's got a moderate tip but I can throw it a little further because it's seven feet long. This is in the Aquafin. I use this medium light a lot. Actually, this is a medium light fast, if I remember right. But this, again, is in the Fitzgerald series, and you might be able to see the, the math right there. But uh, between that, 10-pound diamond braid, I just picked up this Daiwa. This is the 2500 MQ, so I'm gonna I'm gonna fish this on this particular rod. But these two rods that I've got right here, between the Versa series from Fitzgerald with the Shimano on it, and then the Aquafin with the Daiwa MQ <coughs> BLT, I feel like I have a good grip on a lot of this wintertime fishing. Now let's go out into the shop and I want to show you how these baits look in the water and keep in mind this is fresh water not salt water salt water they're even more buoyant come on all right here is my test tank this is where i really test the sink rate of certain plugs and things like that but today we're going to test out the buoyancy of the z-man elastec baits now inside the studio i was showing you the finesse trd and the big trd and I'm going to talk a little bit about how I like to retrieve them, but you can get a really good idea of how visible and lifelike this looks in the water to a fish. I mean, these things stand straight up. They cannot hide whether you're fishing in grass, gravel, rocks, sand holes. 
And a standard plastisol bait would just lay there on the bottom if you worked it slow, not these. That's what makes these baits superior to most plastisol baits. Well, you saw it with your own eyes. When you, when you see the baits and how they stand in that water, and you can just imagine with a little bit of movement and a fish approaching it and leaning over and looking like it's alive, he's just gonna pop it. I mean, it's almost like these baits literally breathe. They really do. They have so much action. Elastec is a huge advantage in the wintertime, for sure. But it's also a gigantic advantage to all of you inshore guys that have spooky redfish that you're trying to catch or that big sow trout that's sitting in one zone. You know it's there and you want to work something slow, but it can't have tail action. It can't be darted around. It just has to kind of slip into the zone so gently. This is the bait right here, the big TRD. So if you're looking to try something that's going to be super effective the month of January, the month of February, and sometimes even getting into March if the season lasts that long with cold weather, you've got to try the big TRD and the finesse TRD. I promise you, these two profiles are going to change the way you fish this winter. All right, well, hopefully all these tips that I share with you every day, you're taking them to the water and you're catching fish with them. Well, I've got some good news. Coming up next month in February, at some point in the month, we're kicking off Flats Class University. It's a subscription business. It's going to be very successful. I've been working on a lot of content for it. So it's this on steroids for all of you that want to be better inshore fishermen. And after all, that's my job. Okay, until next time, you guys keep those rods bent. I'll see you back here at Flats Class YouTube.